Bam, we're live. Chris Madigan. BZA PR. What's BZA? Someone Google that. BZA PR on behalf of CrossFit. BZA. Oh, shit. They've hired an outside fucking company. BZ. They're not even hiding it anymore that they fucking BZA sold out. Public Relations. Wow. A PR company out, out of LA. Wow. Oh, that's not good. Woketopia. 30 years Woke of the nation's Woke. leading communications. <laughs> uh, Brian Friend, hi. How's it going? Andrew Hiller, hi. How are you? You're off center, but I, you know, do what you want. <laughs> I don't it's, it's, it's kind of uh, where I hang out. I hang out here. I make the video shit pops up over here. <laughs> oh, is that really? Is that true? That's why I'm always off set, yeah, because I put things up over here. So uh, is uh, Jason CF Media. Props to Jason CF Media. And uh, Matthew Souza back from um, the continent known as Europe. Uh, you, you know what my wife said, uh, Matt, is that the reason why Paris seem like they're char- the people at Charles de Gaulle seem like assholes to you is because re- you can't just blame the French people because she said the people in Spain are so damn nice. Yeah, the people in Spain and Italy were awesome. Yeah, so she said that kind of fucked your, your whole radar up. Perception been, yeah. makes sense. Look at all these handsome fellas and Andrew Lewis. Andrew Hiller. Oh, right, Andrew Hiller. Who the hell is Andrew Lewis? Fuck, I don't <laughs> know. It's like C.S. Lewis. He wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm his I don't brother. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm a mess. <laughs> I just ran in. Uh, Sevon, I got your CEO shirt while competing at Crash last weekend for the first time. Amazing event. And it was icing on the cake to get your shirt. Oh, that's awesome. Teresa Harvey. Can we, can we pull up her IG? Teresa, I will give you uh oh my firstborn child if you have a post wearing your uh ceo shirt careful careful <laughs> see ya avi uh <laughs> earlier today brian feel free to jump in at any time i fuck this up earlier today approximately 33 minutes ago pacific S- standard time i guess anywhere you were on planet earth 33 minutes ago a crossfit released something that says crossfit introduces updates and and improvements we'll be the judge of that of the 2023 CrossFit Games season. That's so funny that they say improvements. <laughs> the bold oh, play. This shit. CrossFit introduces updates and improvements ahead of the 2023 CrossFit Games season. Like, don't waste my time. Just say CrossFit introduces updates to 2023 Ooh. season. That's it. Pretty wasted a bunch of words. New competition maps. Cool. That's cool. I like that. Standardized programming. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. And other competition improvements. I are, just checked. Why improvements? Uh, I Let's see. see plays out Sorry, now. Teresa Harvey. I don't see this Seven CEO shirt. Mm, no, mm, that's disappointing. Unacceptable. Maybe it's keep scrolling. It could be Maybe. anywhere. Maybe oh, it's oh, she just got it. Mm. Uh, Sevon, Greg C. Mary kill. Fuck today's guests. <laughs> Stay I'm marrying Souza. Stay tuned. I'm gonna fuck myself. <laughs> yeah, every day. Uh, this comes out of Boulder, Colorado, October 11th, 2022. CrossFit Today announces updates of its season-long schedule that will be incorporated immediately ahead of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games season. This is how you read all your emails. You just kind of read it and you digest each sentence for a couple minutes. No, I usually just delete. <laughs> Guys, who wrote this shit? A PR firm for 30 how years. How the fuck is what immediately ahead of? Yeah, I fucking know. You just told me. CrossFit Today announced the update to its long. Listen to this sentence. CrossFit Today <laughs> announced updates to its season long schedule that will be incorporated immediately ahead of the 2023 Nova. Isn't that right now? <laughs> Why can't they just say immediately? Yeah, immediately. Or or yeah. just uh, I, what? the twenty twenty three season like begins with CrossFit Open on Thursday, that. February sixteenth, two thousand twenty three. Okay, so the season hasn't started yet and concludes returning to Madison, Wisconsin for the Noble CrossFit Games the week of July thirty first through August sixth. So uh, let's start there. Is any of this news new, Brian? That the season starts? I guess that means the open starts on February sixteenth, two thousand twenty three, and that we have dates for the games. Is this new? 
Yeah, they had not previously announced. Uh, they had announced the dates for the Open, at least the starting of it. They have not previously announced the dates for the game, so that's new. And it's also new, uh, and they wanted to clearly make a point of that, that they're announcing these things earlier than they have in the past. I didn't see that. I have, have I got to that? That they that they no no that's why they're back to that. That's what they said. Uh, incorporated them. Um, they announced updates immediately ahead of all of that. Is in contrast to years in the past where these types of uh, announcements would come later, or sometimes even after the season had begun. Okay. And when it says, um, so they're patting themselves on the back without, they just tell us you want to pat yourself on the back. Well, I'm okay with some self <laughs> self patting. Um, and when it says the open will start Thursday, February 16th, that, that sounds like because it says Thursday that that will be the actual, and that's not registration. That's the actual announcement for the first event. Correct. No registration okay. usually opens up five, six weeks ahead of that. Okay. That's the date that uh, I think you guys should be pushing because that's when the dollars come in. And the games are July 31st through August 6th. I'm assuming August 6th is a Sunday and July 31st is a Monday. Monday. But, but I'm just making assumptions. No, um, changes are being incorporated to the CrossFit Open, quarterfinals, semifinals, CrossFit Games, and some athletic divisions. By the way, do you, do you have any issues with anything that we just read? <laughs> what are athletic divisions? Uh, <laughs> I know from reading through this, the that they're referring ones. to some of the, maybe the Masters team or adaptive divisions, but I don't know if I've ever heard them referred to as athletic divisions before. I would assume that all of that divisions are athletic because yeah, there are true. athletes competing in them. <laughs> we shall find out. Yeah, kids. Uh, our goal is to make the transgender division this year larger than any of the other divisions with a prize money of six million dollars. Wow, that's awesome. Game on. I'm in. <laughs> hey, Hiller, you're on so much tea. You could be. You I'm could in. be in the uh well no, the second I stop taking it, I'll qualify. Yeah, just plummet. <laughs> I'm in six mil. Oh, six mil. Damn. Our goal is to increase the amount of people who see Hold on, part- you might just tell a couple people that was a joke. That was a joke, by the way. There is no transgender division, and if there is, I'm even more certain that the money isn't six million dollars. <laughs> I wonder who the richest transgender person is in the world. You know how like they have the richest black guy, the richest like Jenner. Woman. What? They're a Jenner. Oh, uh, you know, oh yeah. Bruce, Bruce Jenner is the Formerly richest. Formerly known as Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Pop yeah. culture. I got it all. I know. You're right. I, what yeah. about those Wozniak uh, brothers who made the Matrix? Not more wealthy than the Jenner. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm on the spot. I would love to have uh, Caitlyn Jenner as a... Um... Seven, when's the last time you had coffee? Oh, not recently. Okay. And I've switched to decaf. Why? Do I, do I seem like I need some? Or I've had too much. Switch to decaf. Well, that's not true. I've been mixing my um, p- Paper Street coffee with some decaf beans. 50-50. Dif- difficult Light says it's not Jenner. Are you it transitioning? It might be Wozniak. No, I am transitioning. I want to sleep better, and I drink coffee all day. Our goal is to increase the amount of people who see and participate in the sport and welcome more people to take up CrossFit training as a result. Uh, You have to know that is a fucking lie by the way they treat this podcast and the fact that this podcast is the most influential media piece in the fucking CrossFit space, period. End of story. Mic drop. So that's not true. Or else they would be kinder to us. Although they are very kind. It's We're just recording weird. phase. Actually, strike all that. I want to. I want to strike that from the record. They're actually Don's <laughs> coming on, and we had Adrian on. Yeah, I don't... started sweating. Like maybe I started. I felt a bead of sweat build under one of my armpits. I think that. Right, let me come back you on just that at the end of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just don't think that they're playing me right. We wanted to announce future season formats and timelines earlier than we've done in the past so that the athletes and affiliates have ample opportunity to plan their training and scheduling with confidence. Said just, wow. Wow, what? Said Justin Berg, GM of Sport. This is like, this isn't like, I don't care about any of this. <laughs> I think that's what I thought uh, when I was reading it. I just want to know when it is. I want to know what the stuff is. I don't, it's like, they're, it's like, honey, I want to tell you something. I love you so much. I have a new wife. I'm bringing a girl to our bedroom. I mean, it's like, well, let's be, let's be fair. There, okay. you know, 
a lot of the conversations that we've had over the last year, we have asked for more communication. So not just give us something, but to tell us why you're doing it. Okay. Tell us what the intention is. Tell us who you've talked to to help make these decisions or maybe why you've made them. So I think that they're attempting to do that here. I think I'm telling I, what I think that they're doing is, is they're pat they're they're be, it almost feels like they're no, being it's not necessarily that they've done a great job of it, but that's what they're attempting to do. OK, it feels like they're feeling insecure or something about it. And they're wasting my time by making me read these words that want to make that that mean nothing to me. Like this is what you tell your own team. Hey, guys, congratulations. You guys. Let us say this. Let Brian be like, holy shit, I can't believe how early they release this. Not you guys saying it about yourself. Or make me read it. Most of the people who, anyway, I know none of the athletes give a fuck about this. They just want the numbers. How much is it going to cost? What are the dates? When do we start training? When do we register? We know how hard our athletes work, and we want them to be prepared to put their best foot forward as a whole. We understand that while every CrossFit athlete might not choose to compete, there are those who love our sport and see the benefits of this magical community. Getting ahead of our scheduled events will allow more people to reap the overall benefits of CrossFit. I don't understand. Chris Madigan, you have to fill up 1,000 words in your email to the community. He, he gets paid Go. for he gets paid <laughs> that's a, per, per yeah. word. You got to justify that price point. Uh, new competition. Yes. Okay, so now we're at the good shit. This is the good shit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so anyone at home, anyone who got this email, you don't have to read. Just read the first paragraph and skip the next three paragraphs. Okay, here we go. A new competition map. This is exciting. I'm excited. Athletes will compete in regions based on their country of citizenship, starting with the CrossFit Open through the semifinals. The most notable changes in the map for individuals and team athletes is the division of North America into two competition regions, East and West. <clears throat> That's a so good does thing. that, Brian, There's, does that mean if you're a citizen of the U.S., you get to choose whether you're going to be in the East or the West? No. There's So first of all, athletes will compete in regions based on their country of citizenship. I think this is a really important bullet point here, and I don't think if I'm remembering correctly that it was included in the article the morning chalk up wrote about this this is something that i'm not that excited about I, that's the way it was last year though that's no change right correct and i was under the impression that there was a lot of conversation going on about athletes having the opportunity to compete where they live instead of where they're from and that's something that i am a big proponent of and i just just one example but it's based on some examples from the past maybe we'll start with the past examples in the first year of semifinals two years ago Everyone knows that Tia Claire Toomey had the opportunity or could not compete in Australia because of complications with travel at the time in the world. So she competed at the MAC. She won the MAC. We know what the implications of that were. In addition to Tia Claire Toomey, there were about a dozen other people who were unable to travel back to their continent of residence or what do they say here, country of citizenship. Name three. Name three. Can't because every other one of them finished last place at the semifinal that they were displaced to. And the only exceptions were that if they beat someone else who was also displaced. So in, in that entire season, all of the athletes that were unable to travel and compete, they either finished first, one person, or last, about a dozen other people. But what I'm specifically thinking about for this year is Roman Kretikoff. And I'm sure there are other examples like this, but it's absolutely, absolutely ludicrous to me that Roman Kretikoff should have to travel to Asia two months before the CrossFit Games, where he's a legitimate contender to win the CrossFit Games, just to go and totally embarrass everyone else there. He's on a totally different level in terms of competition than, than the rest of those people. And we know how difficult it's been for him to get here and all, all of the other backstory of that. He's got his family here now. He's got a life here now. He has no intention or need to go back to Asia for any of that. It's only complicated things for him. That's already been an incredibly complicated situation. I know there are other athletes that this would be the case for because we saw it play out this year already. Or Cohen was unable to travel from Israel to South Korea. Dennis Samsonov and Mort Mortis uh, Hagafi were on it. I apologize if I mispronounced his name there. Anyway, I know. They were unable to travel to, to travel to, to South Korea. Think tank athlete Hamza, right? Hamza Tarafi. That's it. Yes, thank you. Anyway, I, so I don't. I mean, you're, I'm, I'm not compelled by what you're saying, Brian. I because how are you not? How what? Why you're make him travel there? Now, there's one caveat to this: is that there's a lot of information that's not that's not included here. And there's more information that's to come. If suddenly the semifinal prize purse for winning it is $20,000, then maybe I'll change my mind because now it's worth it to make the trip over there. But if you have to spend five grand to get there to compete for a spot that we know you're going to qualify anyway, what is the point of making him go? 
Let me ask you this. So you're saying that it's okay for an American, you, you would think it would be okay for one of a, a, the studs from North America to go over and uh, win the, the, what, the Chinese region or whatever that region is. 100%. Yeah, for sure. If they're living there. If they're no, living no, there, not it. Oh, oh, there. I they see what you're saying. They are living there. It's happened saying. in the past. Okay. They did that during the, the Glass All of the era. athletes okay. that, used to live, that used to train in Dubai – would compete What's a in the compromise you want to make? What's Kathy a compromise Davis you want to make? Was living in Boston, she competed in the Northeast. Okay. Sarah Sigma Sutter moved to Cookville. Okay. She competed in the Central Regional. It's fine. Let them compete where they live. It's ridiculous to send them across the world for that. How how long would they have to live there? I agree with you. How long would they have to the live there? The start of the season. When you in mm. okay. So to your second question about North America, it says somewhere in here that once you register for the Open, they will tell you whether you're competing in the East or the West and your track from the Open through the quarterfinals, through the semifinals to the games will be known. That should just be the case for everyone based on where you register, where you live. So why did they do it? Because they want global representation at the games. They'll still get global representation at the games. No, they're still getting... Agree. No, no one. Just answering. Are you telling me there's a handful of individuals who are sitting at the CrossFit Games who thought about people like Roman Krennikov and they're like, "Fuck it, this is the better decision." Or, or, or this, or yeah. they really are concerned with people moving somewhere to 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 China or wherever the fuck that region is. Where is that region? Korea. Who cares? Go yeah, over okay. there because I'll tell you what. If yeah. there's some guy who's 25th best in the United States and he decides to move him and his family and whatever else to China to live there to try to compete to make the CrossFit Games and he beats everyone in Asia, great. That means he's better than them and that means the field will be better overall. I agree. And maybe Patrick Vellner would be a fucking good Canadian and just do it so that more Canadians could get in. It could be kind of his way of like, hey, if all you guys chip in a thousand bucks, I'll leave this region. And <laughs> <laughs> Pay my moving expenses. This is a good thing for Canada because I have had this contention the past two years as well that the Atlas Games is basically just the Canadian Games. And I think nine out of the ten male qualifiers and maybe ten out of the ten female qualifiers there, or maybe it's eight and nine or something like that, were from Canada anyway, and a majority of the field is Canadian. And I had said, well, look at the men in Canada in particular. You have Valner and Fikowski and Vino, top ten. You have Adler, top ten. You have Alexander Caron. He went second place at Wadapalooza. Samuel Cornoyer, we don't ne necessarily know. His, you already can't have that many guys. That's already six guys that have top 20 potential at the game. Now they're going to be distributed east and west, and they'll have more opportunity to get through if they're good enough to. So we, so the U.S. had four semifinals last year, and Canada had two. And this year, be, it's that six total, and now they just have two. Between they had the four last year, and Canada had one of those four. Three in the U.S., one in Canada, four total. Now oh, Atlas Games only, is the only one. There wasn't one on the west. There was nothing on the west at all. Okay, so now, so so now there's only now there's only two. There are two. North America, Do they take East, twice as North many America, people? West. Do they take twice as many people from each one? They take 10 from each one. It's they haven't said that number think of so. 20. They, haven't here. they not said in here the number of athletes they're taking from each? Yeah, wow, easy. taking 10. Okay, so I see what's going on. They're, they're, they're bringing these events in-house, and they're trying to save money. They want to make sure they don't fucking overextend. What does it say I, I'm okay with that, that Brian. right? Mm -hmm. Right, Brian? I don't know if it's in this one or the morning chalk ups article. Do you see it that uh, way, Souza? Yeah. They're just they're they're taking the events back. They're call are they calling they're them reducing regionals? overhead. They're reducing overhead. Are they calling these regionals again? Who's gonna run these? Is CrossFit running these? Let's keep reading. Okay. Uh because it sounds like it's just a way to just shore up some uh some money evaporating. Th yeah. Which I don't I, I can't hate for that. This eliminates the need for a seeding process during semifinals. What's that mean? Remember during the semifinals that the, in the North America and Europe, there was always a controversy about who got placed where, where you placed in the Atlas Games, and could you get there if you were placed there? Oh, Athlete okay. opinions came into okay. place, all this other okay. unknown okay. stuff. Upon registering for the 2023 CrossFit Open, each athlete will know the competition roadmap from Open through the Games. Upon registering. I think they mean after registering. Not on top. Upon. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even a good writer. I just, I just know how to listen. Standardized programming. CrossFit will standardize and program all events for the entire season, including all of 2023 semifinal events. Big thumbs up. Yeah, that's good. Meaning every single person who competes in the CrossFit Games will have taken the same road of people who have the same genitalia as them. 
Damn. That's as accurate as I could say it. That's right, right? Yeah. And that's, and that's better for the athletes too, because I think one of the, from just a, a fan like viewpoint, <clears throat> if you're having to pay attention to what all the events are and what all the semifinals, you're like focusing on the events and not the athletes. So if you already know it, like how it was with regionals and you watched one weekend and you already know all the events that are coming up, now you're focused more on the athletes than you are on trying to figure out what event is where and which one is which and everything else. And it simplifies it, which actually will, in my opinion, help with more people that aren't necessarily super into the sport to bring them back into it, to pay more attention to the athletes. Because it's less to complain about. <laughs> well, personally, yeah. Andrew, to so your they question, think. It's, uh, I, don't, I haven't read through this entire email we're doing now, but on the Morning Chalk Ups website, it says the fields will be stronger, but the total number of game spots allocated to these regions will remain the same. Yeah, I thought so. So it's five. No, it's 20 for North America. It's the same spots allocated so all right so you derive that into 10 and 10 okay yeah 10 for east 10 for west got it um well at least there's another caveat okay. there's a, later yeah. on here yep yep okay so so we so i like that we don't need the uh seating for the semifinals. uh everything else you like you like the standardization andrew you first of the programming oh yeah yeah it was one of the best things to tear apart during the season was how it didn't seem as if they were getting the right people there based upon the workouts and some of the workouts just seemed biased one way or the other. There's a lot of, right there, there are a lot of reasons why this is a good thing. Some of them are specific to who's doing the programming in a certain region. You know, there are, um, I wrote a bunch of articles about why, uh, how there were certain things being tested, some places that weren't being tested at all. Other places, we drew comparisons to the past where we saw high-level games contenders like Samantha Briggs or Katrin Davis' daughter miss out on a game season because something that they weren't very good at was programmed one year. But in this most recent model, that could have happened to Andrew where he was competing, but I may not have had the same high skill level test in the semifinal I was competing at or whatever. How about Castro always saying that the open, the regionals and the games were always a linear progression and there was always a plan to each of those things. And that was completely thrown out the window when mm -hmm. everyone could do whatever they wanted at the level of the semifinals. Yeah, 100% so. true. Also, you know, it's we had that in 2021 where we saw a one rep max snatch at the games, but we also saw a one rep max snatch at a hand at half the semifinals. Oh, it's a pleasure. Hey, <laughs> uh, Brian, Brian just talked to himself. Um, anyway, cool. so yeah, that's Lazar's another great point, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, Lazar's listening. Uh, um, <laughs> Crossroad will standardize the program all events for the entire season, including all of 2023 semifinal events. Advancing from the semifinals to the CrossFit Games, there will be a baseline number of CrossFit Games qualifying spots for each semifinal. In lieu of the last chance qualifier, the final game's qualifying spots will be allocated from the semifinals according to a ranking system based on the strength of the field. So, Susa, can you pull up uh, Tyler Watkins' Instagram story? So basically, yeah. there will be no last chance qualifier, and the final game's qualifying spots will be allocated from the semifinals according to the ranking system based, based on the strength of the field. Is that Z-score? Not Z-score, no, but last May or April, <laughs> Tyler and I co-published an article that talked specifically about trying to solve this kind of solution, and he identified this, uh, these bullet points here probably from the Morning Chalk Ups article, I think, or maybe this is from the email, I can't tell, in his format. And then on the next slide, he shows the table that we had come up with that basically you know, talks about this. So this was a model that he created. That that shows this basically that we were allocating spots based on strength of schedule, uh, strength of athletes in those semifinals uh, from previous years. So I'm not exactly sure how they're planning to go about assessing the strength of each semifinal. This is where I think this this caveat is what I think allows for athletes to compete where they live and still have a reasonable distribution of game spots. So for example, if you were allowed to compete where you live. And Roman Krenikov and Guimaieros, and just for you know the sake of conversation, um, uh, you know two other game high level games athletes were living in the United States and therefore competing in the United States. You could factor that into uh, the equation when deciding how to allocate the game spots. So if they're already implementing a, a plan for distributing some of the game spots based on strengths of semifinal, 
then why not just do that across the board after athletes register? You know, you're not going to make the strength of semifinal based on athletes of 100 through 500 in the world. It's going to be based on the athletes that we know about. So what's that mean? What does what mean? What does it mean then what they're saying? So what they're saying is that there's a fixed number. My understanding is there's a fixed number of spots per semifinal. I mean, per continent, 10, 20 in the United States, 10 in Europe. And I'm assuming based on what's been released, three, two, two, and one in the rest of the world. Which, is that right? I saw, I saw that in the comments, JR threw that up earlier, I think. Three in, in, in Oceania, two in Asia. It sounded right, yes. Two in South America, one in Africa. And this gets us to 38. That means that there's two remaining spots left, and they're planning to distribute those spots somewhere based on strength of semifinal field. Oh, does it say field? I think it – oh, it does. Oh, shit. So we don't know. We don't know what the fuck's going on with the ba- – this is what we know. We know there won't be a last chance qualifier since everyone's doing the same workout. They're going to try to figure out a fair way to get people uh, – to the to, to the CrossFit Games who didn't qualify from their regions, but we're close. Some number eleven guys are going to go from somewhere. Well, we maybe had recommended. A we had we had suggested at some points during the last year that uh, you could have two weeks of semifinals, and you and if there were standardized programming, you could look at how all of the athletes in week one did. And besides the guys who've already qualified, you could assign one or two or however many spots to the next best in like a cross semifinal comparison type thing and then do the same thing for week two here why don't we just do it by skin color (laughs) because this is the show from earlier today you're talking about oh right right right. (laughs) i got my my shows i got my shows Shows are messed up i got got my shows okay um well i'm excited to see how they're gonna i'm excited to see how they're gonna do that me too and because however they decide to do that will foster a further conversation for if it's possible to implement that same method in addition to letting athletes compete where they live. The, the part where the part, the argument that people have had where this is not fair, this standardized testing, by the way, is doesn't matter whenever anyone brings it up, except right here. If you have a last, if you have a, if you're going to let people go in beyond what was already expected. And here's why the people who go last are going to have the people, the regions that go last with standardized testing theoretically have a better chance at doing the workouts. More they practice know what the time. scores all ready to break. They can <clears throat> practice more. And so yeah. whatever method they come up with, that's going to be one of the arguments. I'm sure we're going to throw at it right away to kind of crowbar it or attack it. What was that? And, and, and not, not I that I think, think there's any gonna... validity there. Who gives a fuck what's fair, but, but it, but it is, it is worth talking about. We're going to say some Brian. Well, what's the unknown is whether they're going to assess this ranking system based on the strength of field of how they perform in semifinals or in how they've performed previously. So if they're if they have standardized programming for everyone worldwide in quarterfinals, then they could use the quarterfinal performance and apply that to the semifinal fields and identify the two strongest fields relative to the number of competitors in those fields and then give each one of those one spot or potentially give one of those two spots if they were you know that that strong. They need to just get rid of the quarterfinals. Go straight from the – make the open five weeks again and go straight to the semifinals. Or nailed it. Runner. Agreed. Yeah, yeah but they're going to make less money that way. Exactly. Also nailed it. So I, don't know. Say, I don't know. I don't know. That, isn't it like another 50 bucks to register if you make quarterfinals? It's five weeks either way. Brian, isn't that something you and I talked about at one point, just making the oh. quarterfinals like a layer of competition to the CrossFit Games? Hey, wh- hey yeah, what if they did this? What if they charge you 20 bucks for the first three workouts? And if you want the next two, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a video game. If you want play to unlock to and you got to drop pay another to 50. I mean, yeah, it's basically exactly. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And then with that 10%, it's wide They would be better off do doing it. that if they want to make more money because then you still might have some idiots who are way outside the, the whatever the threshold is that just still want to pay the 50 bucks to get their name yeah. on the later. Yeah, say they're idiots. That was a little strong, Brian. Idiot. Care, careful with the idiot, Brian. Damn, that's my word. <laughs> too much, uh, watching too many of we, your videos. That's what I said. I all the stuff we feisty. say. <laughs> okay, so this is good. I, I since we start since we've gotten into the meat of this, I'm 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 enjoying this. Um, d- okay. Uh, do you, do you want to say, is there anything that's really upsetting you at all right so far, Brian or Hiller or Sousa, that like, are you tripping that yeah. there'll only be East and Boy, West we and North America? Are you tripping that we'll be sending 10? Like, 
Is there anything that's freaking you out so far? So many I don't questions. think we've gotten to that part yet. Okay, besides that, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> that means the ratings will be good. Uh, Susan, uh, Hiller, anything freaking you out so far? Are you okay with uh, North America only having two shows? So far, we're okay, yeah. Okay. The, in the I still prefer, or- if I mean, if anything, it's just that it's not like it was during the regionals. I just didn't see anything wrong with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's kind of what I always say. And they uh, fixed it, which broke it. <laughs> and now they're not going back to the right way. They're trying, but they're like inching their way back. Well, there are other things to consider here. And I'm sure I have to believe that one of the things that went into these decision making process was the financial sustainability of these events. I am okay with the, re- the reduction of events to a smaller number. I think they're, you know, it's more easy to sell or market if you mm-hmm. have, I mean, just think about if we just were to pull up like the lists of the top 20 athletes or maybe top 15 from the Mac and the syndicate and throw them all into one competition people could justify taking four days and spending, you know, $1,500, $2,000 to go to one of these competitions. If that level of caliber of athlete is competing, when you cut that in half and it's not really, you know, it's, it's a lot, that's half as desirable. Did I read it right that in the open, you have to perform it at affiliate now? There's, or a, there's, you can't do provide, it. Provide a video. Yeah. Correct. Oh, they so they eliminated like that. that. You could do it in the presence of a judge only and have it count. I, I like what you're saying, Brian. We're going to get to see people compete against each other, big names that maybe wouldn't have met up before. And, yeah, there'll uh, be deeper, more competitive fields in the semifinals. Mm-hmm. In, in the so in a way, it's like partner. when they dropped it from top 50 people from whatever region to the super regionals, and you, were, you combined like Froning with Hepner. Well, oh, that's Central. what we advertised this show as. There's a, a super regional something thumbnail. Correct. Super okay. regional returns. Okay, so if you say it that way, I like it. Carry yeah, on. that's cool. It's uh, stronger wanna... semifinal fields. Now, there's a you know, like in some aspects, there's a, a little less drama. You know, the first and second, third place guys who went in the last day are not really in any jeopardy of missing out. And there's ten spots instead of five, but whatever. We people still want to see them compete. Those are the biggest names and the best competitors in the sport. There will be you know a lot of drama in the probably six through fifteen range maybe even six through 20 range, depending on the scoring system that they decide to use. Uh, because it's going to be competitive. It's going to be tight. That'll now. be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it'll be great for the fans. Hey, look at this. Um, <laughs> this is so funny. This guy was sucked out of a <laughs> fucking, the cockpit window of his airplane 30 years ago. Why would seven, you? At 7,000 feet. We just talked about Dude. the airplane stuff. I'm terrified to bring this up. Flight 5390 is one of the most storied and remarkable near missed in British Airways history. 27 minutes into the flight from Birmingham to Spain, somewhere over the English Midlands, two of the cockpit windows smashed, depressurized the cabin, and pulled Tim Lancaster out. Uh, this fucking dude survived this? That happened to a chick on a Southwest flight, too. That's an artist she rendition. Survive. She She didn't survive, right? No, she didn't. The yeah, engine blew got... and it hit the window and it sucked her partly out the window. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. someone just sent me that text. That's what I get for reading text. That's what you get for me uh, reading text, Brian, during the I'm show. I'm like more okay. terrified now. Here we go. Fly um crossroads, uh advancing from the semifinal. There will be a baseline. Oh, okay, we did it. Team eligibility. Here we go on to my favorite subject teams. <laughs> <laughs> All team athletes will be requ- required to individually perform the CrossFit open workouts with their affiliate. Check. Okay, thank you. Brian, fine, we're cool. <laughs> After the uh, open... T- it's in- it's interesting wording. They were required to perform them from their affiliate mm-hmm. as different than being able to just submit a video and do it. So there might be a different expectation for teams having to be at their affiliate, but if you're an individual, you could do it in your garage with a video camera. Okay, okay. After the open, teams will then select six athletes, four competing members, and two alternates who will compete in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and CrossFit games together. Once the six-person team is selected, the roster is locked in for the entirety of the season. What are you like laughing it. at, Brian? The way I'm reading or something? He omitted one word. Uh, it's not mine. It's just a typo in their email. I omitted I the word? typo. Once the, six, the six-person team is selected. Oh, once the six-six. Six, six. Six. Yeah, there's I... another typo in there somewhere, too. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> There is an episode of Shouldn't Be Alive on that. 
Yeah, crazy, right? I, I, yeah, wow. Okay, I'll check it out. Big thing there it's... is that you're not going to see CrossFit East Nashville at the top of the leaderboard next year. Who? Correct. So I like one of I made a video on this, and it was how CrossFit East Nashville was the fittest team coming out of the Open, and then they would finish somewhere in the 200s in the quarterfinals, and that was because they still had Tia Saxon. Street Horner, Brookwell's scores in there. And when you put those scores onto a team, they're at the top of the leaderboard. And when you put it in this wording, it says that they've got to commit to either being on the team or going individual. Do you know what Street Horner's team count is? Do you know what his testosterone levels are? It was in the 500s, I think. He posted it. He got it done through something. Yeah. Get, did he do it because I was making fun of him? I'm, like... I, I'm, like, I'm only like 80% <laughs> sure on that. I remember okay. seeing on a story of his maybe a year ago. Okay. <laughs> Um, so that's all we got on team eligibility. Improving the adaptive competition. You, you guys get can't say improving unless it's more money and more athletes. New eligibility requirements will be introduced to compete in the adaptive competition, and this information will be shared soon. So please take our word. It's improvement. It's improving the adaptive competition. So all they're telling you here is that something's coming, but we're not going to tell you. Did I read that right? And trust them. It's going to be good. And it's going to be good. <laughs> God. You guys are good. God, I love PR awesome. firms. Do you know if we sent something out like this when Greg was CEO, he'd have fucking killed somebody. Uh, athletes must. Good news. <laughs> but he probably would have liked it if it was for the games because it would fuck the games up. Makes them look bad. Okay. Athletes must okay. complete CrossFit Open work. Okay, here we go. The CrossFit Open. Thursday, February 16th through March 6th, 2023. Athletes must compete CrossFit Open workouts at an affiliate with scores validated by the affiliate manager or by submitting video evidence. Oh, so you need – that. that's going back to the old way, right, where you submit your score and then, then the affiliate owner has to go through. And mm-hmm. uh, unless, Okay, that's cool. We like that, right? That's good. That's yeah. good. We but like we got to right? be, you know, we really have to be careful and check in the rule book later because under the teams, it did not give the or option said that they they will be required to individually perform the workouts from their affiliate. So if you're planning on competing on a team, stay tuned to find out if you have that video option or not. What would be the what would be the argument against just making everybody do it at a, at a registered affiliate? Like it has to be an affiliate. And you have to go there to do what it. What would be the argument uh, against making everyone have a video? Or both, but what if their their goal is to push people into affiliates and find more people that are going to be training CrossFit? Shouldn't they eliminate your ability to do it at home and make you go to your nearest affiliate to do it? Well, I, I can think of the reason why they don't want every, what Brian said, why everyone doesn't have to have video, because they don't want to discourage people from from registering. Like someone like me, like who cares if I if I don't tape the wall when I do my hands? Is it the same up? answer for Matt's question then? Uh, uh, what's Matt's question. If I have to go to an affiliate to do it. Oh. Right. Instead of doing it in my garage where I work out the other 350 right. days of the year. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you got to get judged by a person and then, you know, whatever. You can still but, do but, video. But, but, you, but, but they, you don't have to get judged by a person. You can do it on a video camera and submit it. Yeah. Okay. But either way, if you if you have to do it on a register affiliate, why wouldn't they do that? Because there's because you don't want to. Like, so, like if I were to enter the open, I would probably just do it. I in years just... past, they allowed you to submit a video as well. No, I know that. But I'm just saying if, they're, if their whole – if they're going to present this as a, a drive to help to, to like queue it up to help the affiliates by saying by making this and streamlining it's going to have more people want to train crossfit wouldn't you just drive more people into the affiliate doors maybe they're at their garage gym and they work out 365 there but they never been exposed to the community so i forced somebody like Sevon to come in and actually do it with the community and people cheering on he's like holy fuck i've been missing out on this the whole time i'm gonna buy a punch card i'm gonna sign up for membership. or he might just say fuck it if they're making me go somewhere else and i'm used to doing it i'm not going to do it yeah, so it'd be interesting on how much they would actually lose out because if they're if the ultimate goal is to help them drive more traffic into the affiliates with the CrossFit Games being the That's biggest. That's not their ultimate goal. They would say that in here if it was their ultimate goal. What What do you think their ultimate goal is? I don't money, know, money. but if they it, but everything in here they've worded to the tenth degree, and if they had any sort of thought process that they were doing this to get people into the affiliates, they would have said so. Yeah. Our goal was always to our goal. I remembered HQ. The, the the main goal was to get as many people to sign up as possible. And I never thought it was. No one ever said explicitly it was to uh, make money. It's to um, cast the big net to find the fittest on earth. But yeah, just to like get as much participation as we can. If for no other reason, bragging rights. Like holy shit, we got five hundred thousand. 
they'll unless they um create a media team they'll never ever get close to that what do you think the may the more driver of having people sign up for the open would be to have the affiliates make big grand events of it and have somebody like me an affiliate owner yes, talk about it yes, all the time yes or allow you the have to get the affiliates cooperation Yes, you need fucking gym. nutball affiliate owners who are like nagging. You got to put on fucking events and you got to put incentives to it and you got to say sign up. We used to do it with our nutrition challenge every single year and it got your team points. Now I don't I, give a fuck. I would do this if I was an affiliate owner. I demand everyone to sign up and to take the $20 off of your fucking monthly. Uh... So you would eat the cost? Yep, I'd eat the cost. Because I Ooh. first of all, I don't think most people would do that. You could do it 50%. I do, I do the whole thing. You have 200 members. Uh, it, it cost you uh, that month, it cost you 4,000 bucks. Ooh. Didn't you Fisher. just this I know. morning talk about the margin? <laughs> bye bye. I know. I know. Just I'm this just morning, saying. you were talking about how expensive it was. Crazy. Crazy. I just think that if CrossFit, I'm saying if I, if I wanted to support the mothership, I would do that because it would be Ooh. so fucking cool the energy you would have in your affiliate if you had all 200 fucking people do the open. Yep. Do you know how fun it would be on Wednesday night at your gym? It would be fucking crazy. We used to get members that way because people would bring their friends in because they were into it and they would show up and they'd be like, this is what it's like when you work out. And they'd be drinking up. at the affiliate that night. Like a lot yep. of it. Big party on the last one. There, there usually is. And that would happen. And, and then, you, and then you go back to five weeks and I mean, that's what I'd do. I'm just yeah. Talking. Oh, it's just interesting. That's all. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Okay. We get back, um, back here. Sorry, Brian. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Kudos for CrossFit for not making anyone do shit still. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, do you mean? what do you mean? Make them do shit? Like, like, them go to an affiliate like hey, if you want to be an affiliate, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, j j have some sort of rule. I like the fact that it's still up to the affiliates. Like, there's affiliates out there who are like, fuck you, Sevon. I don't care if we do the open. Uh, okay. Got cool. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Adaptive athletes will be. Uh, go we're still under the CrossFit Open. Uh, bullet point three: Adaptive athletes will be able to mark CrossFit Open workouts as scaled, and make modifications based on their ability. So we, basically, they're not even in the, the they're not even in the yet? competition. What'd you say? Are these the athletic <laughs> division? Yeah, uh, yeah. You're, hey, oh. a dear adaptive athletes, when you go that far to change the rules, you're no longer in the competition. You have to know that. If I lower the test scores to get into medical school for all Armenians. When you finally become a doctor, you are not really a doctor and no one wants to talk to you and everyone knows it and everyone's going to avoid you like the plague because they want the Chinese guys who had to get the highest test scores. You're not really an athlete. Adaptive athletes will be able to mark CrossFit open workouts as scaled. That's fine. And make modifications based on abilities. That part makes me nervous. Why? Mm. Because what are those? Are those, those modifications need to be I'm universal across the board. We all have to be, if you, if you want it to be a competition, I'm not saying it can't be, I'm not saying it's still not a great workout. You get physical stimulus from it. You're getting, but it goes back to that video. Like um, the, uh, that event you can do pistols or step ups. Like no, <laughs> you, you guys are not competing anymore. You could run a mile or 800 yeah. meters. Yeah. You're not, you're not the people who sub the, when it's run and you jackasses, I mean, you, you poor folks who have bad knees who sub the rower and the bicycle, you are not competing with the class anymore. Just stop. Don't even write your shit on the board. I'm glad you're there. Oh my goodness. I'm glad you're there. I really am glad you're there, but you're not competing with the class anymore. It's not a competition. I don't disagree. Thank you. It's just, did you truth. watch Dave's thing on uh, is this workout CrossFit? Yeah. The not it's usually thing. a competition with yourself is what I took away from a lot of that. Brian, do you have anything anything to say about the adaptive? I know it's been a point of contention of, of how they've handled that in some instances in the past. I don't know specifically why they're including this here, oh. um, except maybe for the hopes of saying that we've heard the complaints in the past and we're going to try to correct them this year. I'll tell you they're why. They're saying that here. it allows hip and Hello. seal to work Hiller out. already told you. <laughs> Hiller already told you what's in there because Chris gets paid per word. <laughs> that's why i put six six they gotta yes. justify that hundred thousand dollar paycheck every time they write something that's elimination right. bullet point four under the crossword open elimination of using a registered judge as the sole way of validating scores i think that's redundant we've already been told it right because you can submit a video is that what they're saying there used to be three options now there are only two options for individuals and possibly only one option for teams team members 
In the past, oh, you I'm could not do reading. one of I'm three not things. This right in the then. past, you could do one of three things. Okay. You could submit Wait, a what? score at an affiliate. Mm -hmm. You could submit a video of your performance, or you could do the performance anywhere in the presence of a certified CrossFit judge, even if it was an affiliate and even if it wasn't uh, recorded on video. The third option <clears> that I just said is no longer an option this year. So if you're at my... Up. So what'd you say, Hiller? That was the that was one of the options I uh, dug into this year with my videos in the open, along with the videos of people uploading videos with nothing on them. It's like, hey, I'm gonna put a video of my workout. It's just like an error screen. It's like, all right, well, how the fuck did they? I remember one this of my day? favorite videos in the history of the CrossFit <laughs> Games. You know, there's always this one or two people that would put up a score that was ridiculous on a workout. Yeah. And one one year, a guy put up. A video he had the top score in the world and you could link to it and you could watch it on youtube oh, and he was in a kilt do you remember this one andrew i do <laughs> he's wearing a kilt yep. and he's like just doing ridiculous lightweight it, it's not it didn't, it didn't last very long up there no it didn't but it was so, those, good those were in the I good had. old days <laughs> so remember so athletes can compete no 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 so anyone who's scaling shouldn't compete no everyone should compete i'm just saying or participate. Everyone should participate. I'm just saying that if you're doing different movements than everyone else, then you're not competing against the, um, the pack. You're only competing against people you do movements with. Okay. So uh, w we like this, and this goes against the narrative that all they care about is making money, by the way. So anyone who says they only care about making money, this this makes it harder for them that we throw, throw that narrative out the window. Hmm. Yeah, because before you just could you could have a judge like if I was a judge and my wife was a judge I could just judge her and she could judge me and we're done. Well, now you just now, put your phone up. What's? I guess. I'm sending a video in. <laughs> we're, we're 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 merely lines away from the point where I wanted to talk. The CrossFit quarterfinals. <laughs> next paragraph. The top ten percent of individuals of each age group and top twenty-five percent of teams will advance to the quarterfinals based on the CrossFit Open results. That's where they want to make their money. That's the same as last year, right? That's the same as last year, and that's something that I think is a. I, I'm not a big fan of the top ten percent or the twenty-five percent. Five and that, ten. Yeah, yeah. Five and ten would be better. Brian. Brian. And, and the reason why Hiller says it will be better, I think, is because then it puts more weight in the open. Correct. Exactly. Good job. <laughs> and lets us be fit, easier to be a fan because there's fewer people to track. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like I said earlier, I think that they are, are weighing financial implications throughout the entire planning process of the season. And, I'm, you know, you, you can, we can look back. We've looked at it before and seen when the top 10% qualify, what percentage of those sign up? And I was curious about where is that sign up percentage coming from? Because it was about five, it was like half the people that qualified in North America males, for example, signed up. But if you looked at them, let's just say there were 10,000 to make it easy numbers. And you looked at the top 2,000, the next 2,000, the next 2,000, the next 2,000, the last 2,000, it was fairly evenly distributed across those. So if you're cutting out the bottom two, three percent or whatever of there, then you're losing a fifth of your revenue stream in the quarterfinals. I would pay Is every it, dollar I own just to see their financial reports. Like how much money did they pick up when they increased it to the 25% and now they're not willing to lose that amount of money. Like why this is where they're trying to make their money. And in lieu of, as you guys keep saying, I'm just saying I don't think it's making I, the competition better. Um, I think it makes it less prestigious too, but I don't, I don't really have a strong opinion about it. I don't, the quarterfinals are like nothing to me. They're just a time to hang. It's just an excuse to hang out with Brian once a week. I can say, well, it's one week, but I can say that <laughs> it's fun. I mean, it is fun for me, at least in the affiliate experience. It's fun for the five to 10 of us that have a chance to make it or make it to the quarterfinals to get together and do those workouts. Yeah, I agree. There's a, there's a couple of people in my gym where that's like a big incentive for them. And if they narrowed it, you would kind of take that away and they might not join the open at all. In which case, if you kept it the way it was, they have a chance to advance and you get 70 bucks out of them instead of 20. Okay, here we go. Uh, individual quarterfinals. No, sorry. Uh, both the team's quarterfinals and the age group quarterfinals will happen during the same week. 
Each competition will have two 24-hour scoring submission windows instead of three. Teams will compete Wednesday through Friday, and age group will compete Friday through Sunday. I think that this uh, decision... Stand by, the- stand by, hold on. <laughs> Craig Howard, $50. Guilt payment for not contributing in the past. This works out to be $2 for each complete episode I've listened to. Good. Uh, let's you, audit. Larry. Let's audit his um, uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. I guarantee you, he's watched more than that. Craig, you're the man. Thank you. Love you, brother. You're the best. Thanks, Craig. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> this means nothing to me either. I, I, Andrew okay, will have an imp- opinion on this. I think. Okay. Horrified. <laughs> <laughs> what having everything done in the same week? No. <laughs> Uh, having the entire team competition on Wednesday through Friday, I know that there are, uh, you know, teams are often talking uh-huh. about how difficult it is to have that schedule anyway, <laughs> and that the yep. weekends are obviously easier to align all four or six people's schedules or whatever is needed for that, and to find space at your affiliate to do it in the midst of the normal class schedules that are going on during that time. I think that they're counter to that. Would well, we're giving you the information way ahead of time so you can plan for it. Okay, I still yeah, think still this is going to be a logistical nightmare for a lot of teams. Oh my God. Well, twenty-five percent of the pe- teams competing can do it. So, what if you have three teams competing? Then you got to find all that time for recording the videos and sending them in. It's it's a nightmare. Some of my favorite videos were okay. We were looking at this athlete, but that athlete's behind three people who are doing a class right now. Like, <laughs> I th- I, w- aren't, I would aren't team competitors just really low rent influencers anyway, and they don't have jobs and they just sit around and. <laughs> And, and they're Not too already. lazy to work on their weaknesses, and that's why they compete t- team. They got a 600-pound snatch and a 15-minute Rich Froning has entered the snatch. <laughs> Rich Froning yeah. has entered the chat. <laughs> Low-rent influencer Froning. I don't know. I think this is a logistical challenge for teams to do it on three weekdays alone. Uh, you know, And they have to be at their affiliate where, they're, like I said, there are full schedules of classes oftentimes going on, and they have very specific parameters usually for these workouts of how the floor has to be laid out. I, for My first opinion here is that that's a bit of an oversight to force the teams to do all of the quarterfinal workouts in their affiliate on weekdays. Every barrier for entry makes it less and less likely that people are going to do it or even do it well. That's like the biggest yeah. thing with this, in my opinion. Uh, Pascal Bossiger, Bossiger. I've given head to one of the guys here four <laughs> times. Wow. Guess which one? Wow. Uh, stop Pascal. texting from your phone, Pascal. <laughs> Pascal's Sorry. Look at the desk right now. Sorry. Sorry. You belong on your knees, son. Sorry. Sorry. Pascal, shh. Uh, Susan's got the brain. Uh, individuals quarterfinals will consist... Uh, but but it's a but here's the here's the thing we're at the quarterfinals now yes. so these teams these teams j- just in defense these teams like th- these are these are more these are our more serious athletes right <sighs> we're, at the, we're at the quarterfinals like take some time off ah maybe not you know i don't you may, you're saying cuz they have they need to be at work right at google and like making money they and, have work and they have rent. families and but the other important aspect of this is that there's classes going on all days at these affiliates mm-hmm. you might have to do a workout that requires you to film all the plates to show that you've measured out this space you have to have time to warm up you have to clear out the gym you have to set you know you have to get the cameras in place you have to have a judge who can do it you have to have athletes that have schedules that are available and daycare for the kids and all these other things and you're forcing all of it onto weekdays so there's no option some of the teams would do all these workouts in 24 hours on a weekend on a saturday because it was the only thing that they had available they could all get together and do it and have space in their affiliate. It's going to be a lot harder to do that on a Thursday or a Friday or a Wednesday. Completely agree with that. Brian, agree or disagree, there was nothing wrong with 18.1 CrossFit Open, which was, I believe, the rowing, toe bar, dumbbell hang, clean and jerk with no standards on where everything had to go. It might have been seven. I think it's eighteen point one. Is this relevant right now? What's the... yeah? Yes, it's relevant. I tell me the tell me the work of the dumbbell hang clean and jerks I, with the toe bar. Oh Correct. yeah, I remember that. And, and the thing that people were doing is they were like putting the rower under the toe bar and they were mm-hmm. trying to get everything as compact as possible with a twenty minute amrap. I think Brent Fakowski did that too in that one, wasn't he? Like 
the one in particular that would like jump off the bar onto the seat of the rower almost. Yep. Yep. Um, and the point I'm trying to make here is that there with what you're talking about, which is everything needs to be taped off and set up and recorded on a Wednesday through Friday with your four teammates who need to get there at a time where you can all meet up with each other. Also not interrupting the classes. One of the biggest like bo uh, borders for entry that I brought up is setting up everything, <laughs> which is a pain in the ass. And it's even harder when you got to do it in this time, time frame. And I didn't see an issue with, having it be kind of a mental hurdle for the teams. It's like, Hey, if you can't figure it out, then it's on you. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to give this person credit, but thank you for the text. The richest transvestite is Jenny Pritzker. Oh. I looked into that, but I uh, left it. And Who's, she's the reason this is happening. And by this, I think, I mean, the chaos of uh, definitions of words. Um, is this Ooh. relevant right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I tried. Made 10 I, tried bucks, I tried. I tried. I tried to leave it around. <laughs> hey, it's, it's plenty relevant. It gave me time to let some seep some gas out with anyone noticing. It was plenty relevant. <laughs> oh, we heard that. Might good. You. Uh, okay. I thought it was relevant. Individuals, okay. individuals quarterfinals will consist of three days of competition, similar to the 2021 and 2022 season. Okay. Yes. Final bullet point under CrossFit quarterfinals. Athletes can compete in any quarterfinals competition and as many competitions they have qualified for, i.e. age group, individual, teams, individual, or age group. Oh, I like that. That's fucking cool. Previously in the email, you guys can help me out here. All, ath all team athletes will be required to individually perform. Teams will select six athletes who will compete in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and games together. Once that team is selected, the roster is locked. So you can lock in the roster for the teams, but those people can also still compete in the other divisions. Is that? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, yeah. So you cannot. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So which means that. Which want. means you could put if, if one of your teammates goes all the way to individual, they might pull out. They could pull out, but you can't replace them as an alternate at that point. And also, this mm -hmm. is why they had this. So this is why they have the teams competing on three days and the masters on the next days, the next three days in the same, within the same week so that you could potentially do both. Let's talk about why Brian and Tommy left the morning chalk up. Uh, <laughs> if you want to, it's because they were getting head from that guy, Patrick Boigle. Now, you know, goodness. That's what I thought too. Breaking news. <laughs> um, I, I heard that breaking. Thank you. Hiller. Hey, Hiller, did you destroy someone yesterday for cheating again? On your channel? No. Uh, yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> wait, I, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I had to think about it. Someone that texted me. They're like, oh, fuck. Hiller, fuck someone up again. I, I put up a, a reel, which is pretty good. I found it. It's, it was his WWE preview. He was trying out for the WWF or something like that. I like how one of his friends back. in the comments said, he cheats like fuck, but he's really a good dude. I love him. So that, like, <laughs> you know what? I, I got like I have friends like five. that. What? What? I got like four or five messages that said the same thing. It's like, dude, oh, this guy's cool. so nice, but he cheats his ass off. He takes a little sand oh, out I, of the wall ball. I know him personally. <laughs> he's on he's on everything you know under the sun injecting. But he's super nice. I'm like, all right, I guess you can be both. <laughs> you, can, you can be nice and a dickhead. Holds the door open every time. We move on to semifinals. The list is really long here. Uh, when we get to semifinals, how many athletes are we talking about? Uh, men and women. Let's read. We'll find out. Okay. Uh, so we have the Dang. open, the quarterfinals, and now we get to the semifinals. We're one step away from the CrossFit Games of 2023. Bullet point one, CrossFit will standardize and program all events for individuals and teams. Like that? Yeah, we already talked about that. We're in favor. B a bullet point two, CrossFit will operate all semifinals in the United States, parentheses two, and Europe one. So they're regionals. They are regionals. They're super regionals. <clears throat> Read the next bullet. Okay. Bullet point three. CrossFit will partner with semifinals organizers in Africa, Asia, Australia, and South America. Yeah. So these last two bullet points, I think, are re relevant to consider together. So you have CrossFit who is taking over completely and operating entirely 
the, the semifinals in the United States and Europe. So this is more or less what regionals were in terms of Crossman's involvement. And then you have four other continents where there will be semifinals going on and they're partnering with them. And that's more similar to the language that was used in the last two seasons when they had basically leased out these events to different event organizers around the world. Uh, you know, what it, my, my, where my brain goes is what is CrossFit's level of involvement in those events to make sure that they don't get too far left behind what's happening in the United States and Europe, where it seems like they're going to be investing a majority of their assets and resources. They're going to send a liaison out there to not make, to not cut the ropes. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. So I, th I would say that I have a question here. What does that mean that you're going to partner with them? How are you going to be supportive of them? Obviously the financial viability of those events is a topic that was discussed at length this past season. We know that there were some that seemed, what well, we, we know that there are some who seem to do pretty well and some that seem to struggle. And there's some of them we know that struggled. Um, and so I, I want to know what their plan is to make sure that those events that they're partnering with, partnering with, not leaving out to dry, uh, to make sure that they don't have a financial struggle again this year. Fair enough. Will there be sponsors that CrossFit brings in that are not just for the ones that they're operating, but ones that those others can draw upon the resources from, for example? Like those are I questions heard that I'd be curious about. What I heard uh, from from some very some very progressive individuals, very intelligent, <laughs> was uh, it Pascal? Academic, very progressive individuals, <laughs> highly educated, that they don't want to do uh, events with any continents that have start with the letter A. That's why they got rid of Africa, Asia, and Australia. I mean, that's and just, that's why they refer to them as the United States instead of uh, North America. <clears throat> yes, I, oh. I did read that. That seemed like a typo. They're it's, a aist. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I've heard that. That's from, why they don't like me. From really it. deep, it was deep my thinkers. First name. Uh, <laughs> deep. Uh, bullet point number four in our CrossFit semifinals: individual athletes and teams <laughs> from the is, same that was affiliate. What talking about? Individual athletes and teams from the same affiliate will compete at the same semifinal location, and upon registering for the CrossFit Open, would know what close location that will be should they qualify that far well shit that i mean th that's some fucking healthy logic right there right <clears throat> this is great of course yes but there you know I, I don't know why it's necessary to say that if there's an east and a west you would presume the geography has something to do with the location and so that if i'm competing in the but same it didn't area, last year because there were people it, in texas being sent to canada right, right. but yeah yeah in context of last year, yes, this is necessary. In context of this year, this is an unnecessary bullet point. I don't know if Roger. I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Brian, in logic, but imagine remember you, this guy gets that we paid for word team. count. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very, it, I mean, yeah, of course they're going to be at the same location, but that's nice. That's good. That's good. Makes me think that someone cares there. Someone gives a fuck. Well, I guess that the big thing to take away is that they're not going to be <laughs> waiting until a week or two before the semifinals to know where they're going. They'll know after they sign up for the, Oh, open. don't count your chick. Oh yeah. 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 Location wise. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. CrossFit is a, and they won't know upon, you won't know upon you'll know after CrossFit is eliminating the semifinal seating process that was used in 2021 and 2022 this as bullet well, and the next bullet, we've already talked about these. As well as the last chance qualifier. Uh, next bullet point, top individual athletes and teams will advance to one of seven worldwide semifinal competitions. These are just for word count. Continue. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, next one, the top 60 individual women and top 60 individual men and top 40 teams will advance and compete at the North American East, North American West, and European semifinals. <sighs> it was a mouthful. Okay. And so before, did those regions only have, did those no, semifinals only is, have 30 so in the past? In the United States, as if you were a male or female, there was there were 120 available spots for semifinals. They were okay, distributed so across four. There are still okay. 120. In Europe, there were 60 for each. There's still 60. Okay. Last season, I made a case for and used data and all of whatever to, to illustrate how that's there's a discrepancy here. And that the talent in Europe is catching up to the United States and it's not being reflected or represented in the way that the season unfolds for those athletes. And so basically what I'm saying is that athletes 61 through 90 in Europe are, are better than athletes 91 through 120 
in North America. But the 191 through 120 in North America still have the opportunity to advance in the season where the 161 through 90 in Europe do not. Anyway, there's no change of the number of people in those continents advancing from. But, uh, but, but they brought, <laughs> but I want that Brian's top 20 most fuckable athletes, men and women. I'll do the men. Brian, stay in your lane. Um, uh, do you consult with Pascal for that list? <laughs> Dude, Dallas Terrell's are on fire. <laughs> uh, no, Big and Flexies is funny too. Hey, Big and Flexi, uh, please, he wants to be milked. Uh, I'll send Pascal to your house afterwards. He can milk the fuck out of you. He'll milk you up. Hey, uh, Brian, so what you're saying is is that um, it's nice that they've kept the same amount, but all the problems that were with the past, not getting the best athletes there that would have just required some minor, minor tweaks, they brought with this new this new way. Yeah, and I mean, it. there was a guy, for example, there was a guy two years ago who finished somewhere in the 60s in, uh, in, in uh, Europe, and he was able to get a backfill because of athletes declining their invite, and he went to the semifinals and he placed eighth. It's pretty good. We did see a case like this in the, I think that, that would have gotten to last chance qualifier back then. We did see a case like this in the United States. I think it was a super anomaly of a case with Bailey rail, who was outside of 120 and got an invite and went and qualified for the games and then made a top 20 at the games. But I, you know, there's, there can always be some exceptions in general. What I'm saying is that if there are, if you were to look at the top 30, those next 30 out and the, and the men's side, and in particular, if you wanted to talk about the one, the 121 through 150 in North America compared to 61 through 90 in Europe, there's no comparison. The 61 through 90 is significantly better. But Europe is getting... They get 60 spots. And what I'm what I'm basically saying is that in Europe, oh. the, the 90, like I think that they, you know, there could be a conversation to have more or in North America, there could be a conversation to have less. If you want to have, based on the, the performance in recent years. It's Fair not enough. a huge thing. It's just it's just something that I've no. okay dove into in the past. Uh, next bullet point: top thirty individual women and men, and the top twenty teams will be invited to compete at each of the semifinals in Africa. Same, same as last year. Okay, Asia, Australia, and South America. Uh, the top thirty athletes in each age group will advance to the semifinals. All age group semifinals will be held online, similar to twenty twenty two. I think that's the same, and that is implying to me that they're probably also going to keep the number at 10. I would struggle to see them have a competition of 30 and only reduce it to 20 that advance to the games. So it doesn't say that here, but I'm assuming that that means there's only 10 athletes per master's division going to the games, which I think is a is not – I don't think – I don't like that. I have talked about before how not every division needs more. For example, the 60 and plus crowd have a far, far fewer number of registrants, participants than the 35 to 50 crowd, for example. And I would like to see a reversion here, at least for probably at the very least for the 17 and 18 year old division and for the 35 through 49 year old divisions. I would like to see them go back to 20. I don't think that's going to be the case based on what I'm seeing here. And I think that's a loss in terms of competition for sure possibly also revenue and maybe even interest of some of those athletes that are on the bubble uh one of the moderators just blocked a porn site from posting but only blocked him for five minutes <laughs> that was actually <laughs> that was actually me <laughs> I hit the wrong button. you know what come back later come back in yeah, five minutes the poach was strong they got five minutes to think um, about it and try Bri again. brian someone from the adaptive class who i had on this podcast and i can't remember his name reached out to me or is he no he's a master's athlete is there some huge master's competition coming up there are two masters, masters fitness, fitness collective fitness. later this month and then the master's legends championship in december whoever that was who contacted me you text me can't remember your name. Who's the guy who's the stud on the show? Um, I texted you. No, no, so, sorry. Jason Grubb. Yeah, Jason Grubb. Oh, Jason Grubb. Did he? I'm on fire Jason, with if the you, I got today. a new phone, Jason, and my shit got all sideways. If it's you and you're watching, uh, please retext me with that. What do you think? Uh, you dropped your phone in shit. See you that there, too. <laughs> I dropped my phone in shit too. And it was in my like back pocket, shit. and I saw the shit, and I pulled my pants up like really slow. It was around my ankles. But it was your phone, shit. No, no. Be cool. Oh, I didn't. I was confused. Continue, I was continue. Confused. Go to my Instagram for all the juicy details. Oh, okay. Each each semifinals competition will receive a designated and guaranteed number of CrossFit Games qualifying spots. That word "guaranteed" makes me nervous as shit. So this is what we were talking about earlier. So that's what they've included here in the morning chalk ups. 
article they wrote that the fields will be stronger, but the total number of game spots allocated to these regions will be the same. So there's potentially a little bit of an inconsistency there. But what I think is the, the main takeaway is that every semifinal will have a minimum and then the leftover spots will be distributed based on the unknown ranking system that will be assigned at some point during the season. That's replaced in the online qualifier. That's replacing the last chance qualifier. Last chance. Thank you. A uh, semifinals competition may be awarded additional CrossFit Games qualifying. Yeah. Oh, let me start that over again. This is good. A semifinals <sighs> competition may be awarded additional CrossFit Games qualifying spots based on the strength of the field present at the specific event. No shit. So they can just so call what it this audible. Is account- yeah. So what this That's is accounting cool, for... Because at the start, of, we'll just take North America, for example, because I think it's most likely to happen here. However, you could you could happen in Europe, too. But in North America in particular, is the easiest example for people to understand. The East and the West will be determined in the open where you're competing. But they'll, and they'll each get 60 spots. But it's possible that the East field is statistically significantly stronger than the West field. And if they're also statistically significantly stronger than Europe's field, then the East North the North American East semifinal would be rewarded with one or two additional qualifying spots. So instead of 10, which are guaranteed, they could get 11 or 12. What I'm curious about, and I'm hopeful about this because I've talked about it before. I think John Young mentioned it in the comments too, is if that distribution of those extra spots will vary between the men's and the women's field. So we could have North America East get the extra two men's spots, but Europe get the extra two women's spots, for example. Hey, it's basically telling the people who don't get it, you, your region sucked. <laughs> hey, there's going to be no, controversy. It's, it's reporting for the competitive excellence of the field. This is what I've always I, wanted I, there to be. Uh, r- right, but it's going to be like, hey, your field sucked and you still didn't make it. This is going to be. Uh, we're going to be. We're going to have some debates about this. This is going to get uh, juicy. I have to have heard Brian say that at least a dozen times over the past couple of years that there are regions that are not as strong as others and they deserve or don't deserve more or less spots. So he's not lying. And he also said significantly statistically, and I'm like, say that five times fast. It's another thing <laughs> yeah, I thought right. as he was talking, significantly, significantly statistically. statistically. Why is Brian rock hard? Why are you rock hard right now, Brian? Pascal. Because he oh, finally oh. got it. Oh, Pascal, <laughs> fuck. Your turn. Pas- <laughs> um, okay. Pascal. Okay. I I think uh, I think that part of you I see Brian when you read this you like it but I think in the end this is going to bite you in the ass I think that somehow the math isn't going to be right and you're going to be like fuck they chose the wrong guy and gal. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. I think I have if confidence. Brooke Wells in misses it. They're putting Brooke Wells in. Right. It's going to be like the Central Beasts again. East Pride, baby. I'm already on a team. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> It'll be the individual oh, we're, we're with the most through. Instagram followers. Through. It'll be somehow, some way also the, the strongest field will have the most Instagram followers with the individual who misses out. <laughs> That's true. I'm calling it. That is true. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, semifinals competition may be awarded additional CrossFit Games qualifying spots. Okay. Uh, second to last bullet point. Previous last chance qualifier spots will be allocated. Okay. It's redundant. Oh. Okay, yeah, that what the fuck? Word Word count. count next one. And the last one answers the question we were talking about earlier. Okay, final bullet point on the CrossFit semifinals. The top 40 individual women, men, and teams, as well as the top 10 athletes in each age group will advance to the CrossFit Games. So we'll start with reverse there. So yes, the speculation that I had about the top 10 in each age division will be going to the Games. So there's no no difference Regardless of if you have 15,000 people sign up for your division or 150, you still only get 10 spots. The, the teams, they're adding two spots back. There were only 38 available in the last two years. Now there will be 40. They have not specified where those other two spots will be coming from. And for the men and the women, it says the top 40. We know that that's not the top 40 fittest in the world. That is just a 40 that have been distributed Ouch. across semifinals in the way that's been explained already in this email. And... Justin Medeiros will be winning the men's competition of uh, final bullet point, and Tia Tumi will be winning the women's. You know it. Agreed. Roman will be stuck in, in wherever he has Brian, to be. In, yeah. in Brian's head, Roman Krennikov is the champ. You all agree? Are we done or are we going on? We have We're going on. A few more minutes. Oh, okay. Maybe Patrick <laughs> Bellner. No, that's John Young. John Young likes Patrick Bellner. Uh, the no- Everyone loves Patrick Bellner. The Noble CrossFit Games. The Noble CrossFit Games, Tuesday, August 1st, Sunday, August 6th, 2023, Madison, Wisconsin. Introducing, They'll be introducing a new six-day format. Uh, 
I think they've had a 60 format in the past. I remember going to the games in 2016, and the Masters division started on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six days. So it's new relative to recent years, but it's not the first time it's ever been done. However, oh, yeah, August 1st or August 6th, yes. So that doesn't mean that the oh, that's individuals – Again, I think if you read in the – oh, no, never mind. That doesn't mean that the individuals – uh, we'll be competing all of those days. Correct. Okay. D uh, total number of uh, – so I don't even know what that means. The, total number of across the game spots remains the same across all divisions is not true. As I just mentioned, there will be two more teams this year than there were the last two years. Otherwise, it stays the same. Oh, get fucked. Oh, damn. Nice job, Ryan. You got him. Make damn. a video on it. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, Brian. That dude who do you know how much this guy gets paid for fucking writing this? <laughs> a lot. Do you know? Do you know how much his company gets paid? More than uh, any of us make, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you should do a video where you like uh, acquire a quote from them dude, for, your, for your company and see. It's crazy. Not a bad idea. It's crazy that they paid you, someone to do this. You're not willing uh, to please uh, sign up for the Seven Podcast newsletter. Uh if you want something uh, uh, extremely uh, well written, how much does an email like this go for, Savon? Uh, I'm sure that I'm sure that they've have some like three million dollar fucking five year minimum deal with this fucking company, something like that. Three year five million dollar deal, something like that. And then this guy probably makes who writes this hey, well, anywhere but, from one to four fifty a year. And we make prediction that this will be one of many emails that'll come out too. And he probably and I don't even know if he wrote it. This guy Chris Madigan. I don't know what they're doing over there. I wonder if that's the company that Weinstein. Let's look at his website afterwards and see if Weinstein got hired over there. I'm just so curious. This idea of Clive's is a good idea. This is basically what Can West Games tried to do. Can I read year. it before you answer? Sorry. Sure. Clive uh, McLaughlin, 449 of something. Um, Euros. Euros. Thoughts on a second tier CrossFit comp to include those who miss out on the games and reduce games field. Second tier comp could be outside the states. It's called Wadapalooza. No, he's talking about like a competition after semifinals and before the games for the athletes that were close that didn't make it. So Can West Games was supposed to be this like this year, ball. which it was kind of like that. The, obviously, there's been the unfortunate situation with paying out the prize purse. That's Did you say the puppy bowl, the toilet bowl. Secondarily, there was a French throwdown during that same time period where a lot of the uh, high-level athletes who barely missed the games, or some of them, many of whom were, some of whom were also in the last chance qualifier, competed. Um, so there are some competitions like that that do exist with at least advertised prize purses that are somewhat attractive to athletes of that caliber. Uh, I think French throwdown most likely will continue in that regard. The big question is going to be what's going to happen to these competitions that were semifinals last year. You know, what is strength and depth going to become if, and who, because CrossFit's running that competition now. Will they hire people from strength and depth and, and Lowlands Throwdown to help run those competitions in Europe on behalf of CrossFit? Or will those competitions go back to existing on their own? And if that's the case, <laughs> if that's the case, then, uh, then maybe they can fill in some of that uh, opportunity or need, Clive. Uh, Brian, I wouldn't normally bother you, but this, uh, with these questions, but this does bother me. This isn't true, right? <laughs> Brian probably root for drive on right You did not, right? It's complicated. Oh God! You Call me when the show is over. Press. Come on. Uh, and closing, uh, closing. Um, Chris Matt, Matt, Chris Madigan from B Z A P R on behalf of CrossFit. <laughs> CrossFit needs someone speaking for them. In the 20 years since its founding, CrossFit has grown from a garage gym in Santa Cruz, California, into the world's most effective program for improving health and performance through nutrition and exercise. CrossFit is the world's leading provider of accredited performance-based training courses and certifications and has more than 125,000 credentialed co coaches across the world. The program can be modified to welcome people of all ages and abilities, and millions of people have already experienced CrossFit's transformational benefits in more than 13,000 affiliated gyms across 158 countries. CrossFit also directs to the CrossFit game season, beginning with the annual CrossFit Open, through – I read something wrong there. Uh, CrossFit Open, through which athletes at every level compete worldwide 
and culminating in the CrossFit Games where top, top athletes compete for the title of Fittest on Earth. There's something in here that's a trip. It's good. The program yeah, can be why, modified why to we welcome people of all ages. You're not modifying nice, the program, nice people. Oh, I don't nice even. Tie. I don't recognize him. Oh, he's a communications expert. Well, then you should know that you should never put two ands in one sentence, you jackass. <laughs> I sat next to this guy at the games in the media like room. The program can be modified to welcome people of all ages and abilities and millions. First, the the program is not being modified. You don't modify the program. Who are you, James Fitzgerald? Ouch, that hurt. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm talking to the writer of this article, not you. Oh, thank you. Who are you, James Fitzgerald? Yeah, Chris, welcome to the, the club. Uh, good, good first try, buddy. It actually, I, I give you. Um, there's That's always gonna be a to grow. swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah, but nah, I, he pop fly, pop fly in the infield. But... Foul tip off his own toe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully he watches this and he learns. That he but I ain't hating. More, more to I ain't hating. I ain't hating. That's point. what we're here for. If what if you wrote something perfect? What would? How would I make fucking thirty six dollars off this video? <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Brian, thank you uh, for being available on such nor- notice. Uh, Andrew Hiller, thank you for being uh, available on such short notice. Susan, at least you could do for being gone for two weeks and leaving me. And uh, Taylor and JR, go fuck yourself for not showing up. Love you guys. Uh, there's a chance we'll be on late tonight uh, with some follow up uh, on the same subject. I'm um, just not sure how Bob well, must swerve on. Okay. Bye bye.